Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about the brachial plexus. I've done a couple of talks on YouTube on the brachial plexus and the complexity around it, but I thought I'd try to do it a different way, as in using a PowerPoint and a, and a, and a lecture. So part of my Body Master Method courses, I use the PowerPoint and I do some talks, and it seems to work very well. But um, if I put the picture of a brachial plexus, it looks rather complex, would you agree? If you're looking at the nerves that exit and all of this information, yeah, it's quite difficult. And if I come back out of that and I ask you now to draw the brachial plexus, how many of you could do that? It's not so easy. So let's have another look. And what I'm going to do in this talk is try to break it down so you can understand it and rather than just trying to discuss the whole picture as you look at it from there. And this is how the brachial plexus will look, yeah, added into the to the body, and you'll notice that the nerves where they exit between C5 and T1, even though these are the nerve roots rather than the vertebral levels, as they come out, it goes over the first rib, under the clavicle, and then underneath pec minor here. And then these nerves on the way down the arm, hence the word brachial, yeah, will become the terminal branches, the radial nerve, the median nerve, and so on. So let's try to break it down into smaller components to see if it makes more sense. Now. Have a look at this picture here, and let's start at the right-hand side, and let's start at where the nerves come from. And then if you're looking at the vertebral level, so you can see this is C4 and C5, then if you look at the arrow, you can see that this is C5 nerve root that comes between the two levels here. So C5 is above the level of the vertebra, just here. And what this indicates is a disc bulge, and then if our disc prolapses, even though that's going to be more posterior, but for the demonstration I had to draw the picture like this, and touches the nerve root and is going to give you symptoms along the C5 nerve root here. Okay, so wherever a C5 supplies, i.e. the shoulder, and also supplies the deltoid yeah, and elbow flexors, it's going to affect that. Looking further down, so you've got C5, C6, C7, T1, T2, but then the nerve roots that come out will be between C5 and T1. So this is the brachial plexus, so we've got five nerve roots to start with. Yeah, come in along here. Part of a nerve root, you can see there is a nerve here. It's called the dorsal scapular nerve. And then this one will supply the rhomboids major and minor. And also there's a branch going to the muscle called the levator scapulae. The phrenic nerve, the phrenic nerve is for the diaphragm. And it also comes from C3 and C4 as well as C5, okay, so that will innovate the diaphragm, obviously to allow you to breathe. And then there is a mnemonic called C3, C4, C5, keeps the diaphragm alive. Now, if you're looking at um, the roots here, so it says between C5 and T1, and the first R, we can use the word remember. Okay, so the first part, yeah, is to remember. So let's have a look at the next one because the roots now become. So look at the next picture. Trunks. Okay, so continuing with this. So now you can see there is a superior or an upper, there is a middle, and an inferior or a lower trunk. So five now becomes three. But there's a branch off one of these, of a superior you know, or the upper trunk. It's called the suprascapular nerve, and that supplies the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus. Let's move further on. So the words now, so as a mnemonic, we can say remember two. So R is the roots, two, the T will be the trunks. Now, the five roots becomes the three trunks. The three trunks splits into the divisions, and you've got three anterior, 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 and then three posterior, 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 and posterior. Now you can see here that the anterior division of the superior trunk continues, and it conjoins with the anterior division of the middle trunk. And then this becomes a cord, but we'll discuss that in the next slide. The posterior divisions, okay, of the superior 
and the middle and the inferior. You can see the three Ps. This one becomes the large posterior cord here. Okay, so now the five become three, which now becomes six, and they are the divisions. And the mnemonic for this will be, remember, roots, T, trunks, D, divisions. So remember to drink. The next one, we're almost there. So again, five roots, three trunks, six divisions along here. Now we become chords. So we've got three chords. This one is called the lateral chord. This one is called the posterior chord. And then this is called the medial chord along here. But you can see there are a few branches off these chords. In this case, you can see that is a nerve that comes off a lateral cord here, and then it's called the lateral pectoral nerve. And as you can probably guess, it supplies the pectoralis major muscle. You've also got a medial pectoral nerve on this side, which is a branch of a medial cord, and that will supply the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor. You can also see these smaller branches off here and here, along there. Okay, so we've got the upper subscapular nerve, which is for the subscapularis. We've got the dorsal, which is for the latissimus, along here. We've actually got the lower subscapula, which is this one, which is not in there. Okay, this is the lower subscapula. And then we've got these cutaneous nerves along here. So the medial cutaneous, one is actually called anti-brachial cutaneous, but it's okay, they're still cutaneous nerves along here. So these are the sensory nerves mainly for this part of the arm and this one coming down to the forearm. And then look at the mnemonic now. So, okay, so we've got the three chords, the C, so the C will be cold. So now we've got to remember to drink cold. And the last one, which will be the branches, okay, which will be the B, which will be the beer. So remember, roots, trunks, divisions, chords, branches. Okay, these are the terminal branches. So we've discussed this. You can see now the three chords, the lateral, the posterior, and the medial. The lateral cord becomes the muscular cutaneous nerve here, along there. But there's a branch coming off the lateral and the medial cord to form the median nerve. The radial nerve is a continuation of the posterior, but there's a branch coming off that, almost like a little wire going to the indicators. And that will become the axillary nerve. And then the medial cord, which is a continuation from the C8 and T1, becomes the ulnar nerve along here. So these are the five branches. And a mnemonic you can use to try to remember the branches will be MAMU. So M-A-R-M-U. Okay, let me just jump ahead with this one. So you can see the branches, so the muscular cutaneous, the axillary, the radial, the median, and the ulnar nerve. One nerve I didn't cover, um, which I wanted to. So you can see that is a nerve called the long thoracic nerve. And if you look at it, okay, there is a branch from C5 and C6 and C7. It's called the long thoracic nerve, and basically that supplies the muscle called the serratus anterior. And if that nerve is damaged, then you'll have something called a winging of the scapula. So just to recap, so the brachial plexus, the finale will be the terminal branches where we've got five. I will do a video where I will discuss how to individualize each of these and how to test them. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, you can add some comments. And please watch my other videos, and I hope you find them useful. Thank you.